All right, let's just left off, or begin where we just left off. So we have horizontal and vertical forces. This symbol in the front means summation, and we're simply going to separate our X and Y. So I'm going to go back to our drawing for number five from the worksheet. So if you want to refer to that, here's number five right here. So what we did here in number five, this is our picture, right? So we have all those forces. This was the case of the book being pushed with an acceleration to the right. So just for the sake of the drawing, I want to bring that back down and redraw it down here with our equations. So our free body diagram. So that's what we want to concentrate on. So let me draw that over on this side. On the free body diagram, we had weight. We had a normal force. We said that those two are equal, but sometimes we don't want to make that assumption. I'm going to show you how I want to set that up in the equation, um, but sometimes you don't know if they're equal and we want to determine or what one might have to be to equal the other and so on. So this was our drawing, our free body diagram from number five. So in this equation, so the goal here is that we draw a great picture and then we make that picture fit these equations. That's our goal. So you want to say these equations like a sentence. Add up all the forces in the X and set them equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. You must consider direction. How do I consider direction? Mathematically, opposites are positives and negative. So for my direction, anything going to the right, I'm going to write as positive. Anything going to the left, I'm going to write as negative. In the vertical, anything going up, I'm going to write as positive. Anything going down, as negative. And I will consistently use this notation throughout the year. So um, you can certainly switch it. It's up to you what you want, positive and negative, but you must distinguish direction. So what I want to do is add up all forces in the horizontal. So Newton's equation for this picture would look like this. I would say my force applied right, plus my force of friction, but it's in the negative direction, equals mass times acceleration. Acceleration vector quantity. I can drop the vector symbol here because I accounted for the positives and negatives, or you can keep it on, up to you. But by putting in the negative and this one being a positive, I did account for that direction. So that's how Newton's equation fits my picture. Every picture is going to be different. Every scenario is going to be different. So this equation becomes different for each scenario. We do the same thing in the y direction. Add up all forces in the vertical. So in this case, I would say my normal force plus my weight, which is down, so I'm going to write that as a negative, equals mass times acceleration. So of course, this is our vertical, this is our horizontal. We can write it mathematically, right, that this is force applied minus the force of friction equals mass times acceleration. Over here we have force normal plus, or I'm sorry, I'm going to erase that, minus the weight equals mass times acceleration. I now have two equations that help me to solve the problem. And that's what Newton's law is. 
So the only way I can derive these equations if I, if I have a correct picture drawn. So what you're the key is drawing the picture, right? So if we go back up to our work that we did in class here today, and let's take let's take the last one here with the car, right? Number eleven. Let's make Newton's law fit here. So this is number eleven. This was our free body diagram, and I'm going to make Newton's law add up all the forces in the x, set them equal to mass times acceleration in the x. I'm going to add up all the forces in the y and set that equal to the mass times acceleration in the y. So in this problem, I'm still going to take anything to the right positive, anything to the left negative, anything up is positive, anything down is negative. So in my x, I only have negative the force of air resistance equals mass times acceleration in the x. That's how that equation would look for problem number 11. In the vertical, you would have the normal force plus negative w equals may. Again, you can write that with force normal minus w equals may. These two equations would help us to get, actually get some numbers. How much is the car accelerating? Which way is it accelerating? How much force of friction would I need to stop it in a certain time period? So the key is deriving equations to fit the free body diagram, right? So notice that those equations look completely different from the ones that we did for number five. I don't have a force applied. The y equation looks very similar, but in this case, I have a force applied. So when Newton's law is written, it is written like this and has to be written like that because each problem is different based on the forces that are present, okay? So what I would like you to do for homework, and actually I'm gonna have you, um, so we had two sheets, right? So for homework, I gave you two sheets. I'm gonna bounce around to pull up those sheets. Like this. Now let me pull that up. Easier if we do it this way. All right. So we have this sheet. And this one. All right, so we're going to bounce from both sheets. I'm going to show you what I want to use. Obviously, in this sheet, we are going to draw our free body diagram, right? So this is key. We must be able to draw our free body diagram. Under your free body diagram, I want you to write down Newton's laws, okay? So that's gonna all come in this first box. So I'm gonna do number one with you, and then you just watch, and then I want you to go back for homework, and you're gonna do numbers two and three on the sheet that I gave you. So you're just watching for number one, and then homework is numbers two and three, and all you're filling in is this first box, right? So together, if we take a look at a question. So number one, we simply go to the question, right? It says, Tom pushes an eight kilogram box across a wooden floor with a force of 20 newtons to cause it to accelerate at a rate of 2.0 meters per second. What is the force of friction between the box and the floor? So I'm going to go back over here. And in my picture, I am going to draw my picture, right? 
So we'll begin with a box on the wooden floor. So if you can go right to the free body diagram, that's fine. Or I'm gonna do my box sitting on the floor and we'll quickly ask myself what forces are present. There would be weight. There would be a normal force. Right? Motion, I'm gonna say is to the right. So friction is opposing motion to the left. Tom's pushing on it, right? With an applied force to the right. No air resistance, no tension, and no other special forces. So I'm going to draw my free body diagram. Weight acting down, normal force acting up, force of friction to the right. And we know there's a rightward acceleration, so we're assuming his applied force is bigger. We can assume that these are equal because there is no motion up and down. However, I want you to get into the habit of setting up your equations without that assumption. So I'll show you how that's gonna play in later. So what you're gonna do is then set up Newton's law horizontally and set up Newton's law vertically. So horizontally, again, to the right positive, left negative, to the, I'm sorry, up, positive, down, negative. So if I look at that picture, I would say force applied plus negative the force of friction equals MAX. In the Y, normal force plus negative W equals MAY. And I'm sure you're like, why do you keep writing it like that? But it just makes sense based on how we are setting up our positives and negatives. So free body diagram, right? A must, make Newton's laws fit your picture. Okay, so definitely want you to do that. So you're gonna do that for complete for numbers two and three. And if we can master that, the rest of this will just come, will flow. So draw those pictures, make the equations fit your pictures, and then we can solve the problem. If you happen, well, we'll continue with that. All right, and then let's see. I think what I want you to do is we'll go ahead and stop right there. So that's it. So that's your homework. I want you to draw the pictures for numbers two and three, set up the equations to fit the picture, and then we'll put that in. If you want to be ambitious and work through a couple more, by all means, go ahead and do that. If you're very familiar with this and you want to do the other steps, that's fine. But I also want to um, go through this with you tomorrow in class, the rest of this sheet. So. Good luck, and I will see you tomorrow.